good kitten internet. Uh, this is actually my third time starting this because of random things. So, welcome back to Wild Arms 1, the actual Let's Play, not the Let's Analyze. Decided Let's Analyze is a good name for the interludes. Also, my camera's tilted a bit. There we go. I'm not wearing a fancy shirt this time, I'm just wearing a nice shirt. Um, as Candace pointed out, that is supposed to be Link. I did not see it as Link until Candace pointed it out. Now I can totally see it as Link. And it makes sense. Um, we're going to go back to the plot. Um, we're still kind of getting railroaded right now. Um, Wild Arms 1 is not a very open-ended game. It's more of a typical JRPG. But it's less Railsy than it has been. Um, so first off, let's go ahead and get our rewards. So this is the Adelaide Council Room. The Minister's waiting. We walked in here before, but there was nothing here. You notice an entire line of treasure chests at the top? Each one of those treasure chests represents somebody that we saved in Adelaide. Um, so as a result, since that's filling up the entire top row, that means we actually saved everybody. Which is good. Finally, the three of you. By the way, you actually don't have to talk about this at all. I hate the fact that you're carrying the burden by yourselves, but our future depends on your journey. Don't worry. Bother. For the glory of Adelaide and Vilgaia, I shall reclaim the teardrop. The Water Guardian, Stoldark, has spoken to me about danger. You say that I am the Shaman Princess of the Guardians? Isn't that actually the first time it's mentioned that she's the Shaman Princess? By a person. I'm pretty sure that Stoldark mentioned it. Then I'm proud to be the innocent one. The princess had a vision! There is no doubt now. You must follow your destiny, princess. Go west through the mountain pass and you will find the town of Milma. There, you will find a large shrine. If you are the innocent one, then you must go there. <laughs> I don't know anything about being a shaman, but, you know, if I could be of any help, sure. I'll deal with whatever is expected of me. So, yeah, um... This is the first time that we get to see Wild Arms violate a trope. So, the trope in question that it looked like it was going to be doing was the whole rebellious princess trope. And really, that's the way it kind of looked, although there was hints that She's not actually a rebellious princess, because she actually has a good working relationship with King Justin. Had, I mean, I'm pretty sure she's not a necromancer. Uh, and yeah. So, these are our rewards. Ooh, so I should explain lucky cards. Lucky cards are a one-use item that will double the amount of experience points that you gain in that combat. They're very, very useful items for leveling up. Money, revive fruit... Mystic Apple, Misanga, get another end game. Uh, so, I should mention that the Holy Parasol that I have here, this is actually end game equipment. Um, if I remember correctly, and I could always load up my last playthrough save, that's actually what I had equipped on Cecilia at the end of the game. And the reason why I had it equipped that way is just because more sorcery didn't do anything when you already had 999 Sork. Um, I believe, yeah. Misenga increases defend, or sorry. Um, so it doesn't look like it does anything. It actually increases luck by one level. So because we have all of those tiny flowers, we really don't need it. But, you know. Uh, there's another one that increases luck by two levels, if I remember right. Thousand Gela, Power Apple, and Magic Carrot. That's nice. So, as you'll notice, uh, Cecilia is in a new outfit. Uh, she remains in this outfit for the entire rest of the game. I believe this is where the King's Room was. This room must bring back good memories to you. Hey, look, it's where I saw my father die. Thanks, game. Pretty sure this is a bad translation. There's a lot of that. Um... This is where he can look out uh, on all of his adoring fans. So anyway, um, we're going to be heading out about now. Um, Adelaide Castle always has this upbeat music. Except during the bad sequence. All I can do is pray for you. See, those that's actually good information from NPCs. And... 
So interesting thing about this, Wild Arms 1 is actually fairly good at giving you information from NPCs that you want. I mean, there's so many other games where, let me move this a little closer, there we go. Um, there's so many other games where you talk to, hey, you don't need to talk to NPCs because they never say anything useful. Um, these aren't just, hey look, there's a magic key that will open sealed doors. Yes, it's called a duplicator. Um, which we call it? I want to talk to these NPCs. Because these NPCs actually have useful information. Don't drink the water if you're in a strange land. Drink the beer, obviously. So you can actually... Oops, I actually didn't mean to enter there. Help. Yeah, I think it would actually be quicker for me to reload. So, let me do that. Ah, oh, boy. Okay. Just reopening these treasure chests really fast. Ah. I'm trying to do this fast and failing to do so. I think I'm actually going slower than last time, other than explaining the items. There we go. And yeah, that's the our first instance of something that if you don't get it the first time, you're not getting it. Um, there's a couple of other things like that in this game, but mostly you can go back to places. As you saw, we were able to go back to the sewer dungeon. Oh yeah, and these actually do say something different if you're not Cecilia. Um, but basically, this forms our quest for the first part of the game. Heard the magic map will record the locations of places you've been to. No one's seen it since the bandits stole it a few years ago. So, the magic map's an interesting item. I didn't know it existed the first time I played through, and I never found it. Just straight up never found it. So you don't need it. Um, but we have our primary quest of the game now. Our primary quest of the game is to return, uh, basically get the teardrop back. Oh, please, don't re Oh, I actually do have to talk to him. Interesting. I didn't realize that. Well, this is officially taking longer than it should have. He's feeling bummed out. Really, game? Hey, okay, well, maybe it would have been faster to go through the sewer dungeon. So, what I meant to do between these videos and forgot to do was get down a list of the rare items in the game. Because we're going to start encounter or rare things, I should say. Because we're going to start encountering them soon. Um, in fact, I believe the first item that I missed playing through the game is coming up. Uh, that would be one of Jack's Fast Draws, and it's the best one by far. Um, it's actually the reason why I'm saving a secret sign, we'll put it that way. So, unfortunately, Adelaide's still in her ruins. And w later on in the game, we actually get to start working on repairing Adelaide. Um... Basically, uh, later on, there'll be an Adelaide Restoration Committee that we have to donate huge sums of money to. So yeah, there's an Adelaide Restoration Committee that will slowly be restoring Adelaide. I always believed in the Guardians, no matter what happened. What else can we believe in? Yeah, this town is very depressing for a good chunk of the game until you start doing the restoration project, which requires huge amounts of money. Um, we can't even start it yet, if I remember correctly. Oh, well, maybe we can. 
We'll have to work together to rebuild our town. I have organized the Adelaide Restoration Committee to oversee the reconstruction of Adelaide. Yep, okay, I can start donating. Absolutely. So you walk in, donate, walk out of town. And you can keep doing this. If I remember correctly, it won't let you donate all the way up. So even if by some cheat slash miracle I actually had enough money to donate all the way up, I couldn't yet. Also, we still don't have better equipment. And I think we have plenty of all of this, yeah. We were brutally attacked by horrific monsters. That's now the tagline for Adelaide. That's really sad. Uh, I need to talk to an armsmeister. Just fix whatever's broken. No big deal. Yes, Emma did survive. I've been totally bored lately. All my work is being done by assistants now. If you want something exciting, please let me know. I'll keep you company. Yes. Oh, I need to... Oh, that's right. Um, Getting more of that is in... Uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the end. See, I don't bother increasing hit bonus on something like this just because I'm just going to use lock-on anyway. So that costs way too much money. That costs 200. I can do that. Yeah, we'll get it up to 10 bullets. There we go. It's about the only thing we can actually upgrade right now. So uh, let's go ahead and pay for a reload. Yep. All right, and then we can walk out and walk back in and see, one, the updates to Adelaide. So each time that you do the Restoration Committee, there will be some type of change in the town. Um, it could be as simple as repairing the streets or fixing some of the roofs. Uh, if I remember correctly, the Restoration Committee will tell you. Now I can donate a thousand, and that's as much as I'm going to be able to afford. I do like the fact that Adelaide's basically a um, living city. Namely, yeah, it got destroyed, but you're working on making it better. And you actually do make changes. Yep, so it determines the rate of population growth in Adelaide. So basically, you donate more money, more things get repaired, and more importantly, people start coming back. Up all day, most of the time. Now that she's gone, I miss her. Strange, isn't it? So much death and destruction in Adelaide, it's brutal. Don't have any status effects. This place is rough. Do I have any crest crafts? No. Okay. Um, it's a place called the Vulcanon Trap on an island in the inner sea. There you will find the machine that amplifies the power of darkness. That's for significantly later, later on in the game. Yep, so that guy is apparently a dream chaser. Never thought we would have been attacked on the day of the festival. Well, you called it a ruin festival, and your city is now in ruins. So yeah, I think I have to donate more money for there to be any significant changes. Uh, no. It had nothing to do with that. Actually, I think... No, it was targeted because of the teardrop. Um, the golems were just an added bonus, and it's an added bonus that's going to hurt. Anyway, we can't afford to donate anything else right now. We'll come back to Adelaide later. Um, if I remember correctly, we can always come back to Adelaide. Yeah, there's not really a point in the game that you get stuck. Need more water. 
So if you're wondering how damage works, feel free to watch my analysis videos. Uh, long story short, uh, each five points of attack power corresponds with an increase in damage. And it's just a... Okay, so we need to go to the southwest. Son, what are you doing? Oh, my cats. That's a bum. Which, if I remember right, was also a mistranslation. There's a lot of those. And there's that boogie again. I still haven't figured out what... I think that might actually just be purely random at this point. So. We are heading over to this mountain pass over here. If I remember correctly, it was just closed before. And I believe this mountain pass has some very useful things inside of it. Oh, that's right. No, you just couldn't go through. I remember now. Because we have permission. Dangerous winds blow through the mountain pass. Please be careful. I usually like exploring with Jack because then I have Pan Pan. So those flowers up there, when you step on them, you take damage. And we're going to have to step on them from time to time. Also, this is a lights out cave. If only we had a fire to light that lantern. Gawo bears! Oh, might as well analyze. I'm pretty sure I'm not one-shotting anything in here. Alright, so. Gallo bear. Level 7. 150 hit points total. No weakness. Must have received an email. Oh yeah, there's that boogie again. Also, we're getting way more XP. As I found out... Oop, tool, lighter acquired. A lighter. Jack can use it to start fires. Fire can shed light or burn obstacles. Okay, now we have a way of... Lighting things on fire. But we're going to go back and light that lantern that we saw. So we can actually see what in the world we're doing. Um... What was I saying? Oh, XP is actually based off of level, as I found out. Uh, Gamora Toads and two Dryads that are in separate groups. Let's analyze the Dryad. I think they're weak against fire, or maybe not. Oh, so the XP that you actually gain for killing something is not predetermined, like I thought it was. Which is weird. Um, the way I noticed it was during my testing, getting 4 XP from balloons, whereas before I was... Oh, actually, maybe it is still predetermined. It's just being divided equally, now that I think about it. Yeah, that's probably it. I don't know. Anyway, I can't actually find how much XP things are worth in the uh, data files, and the reason why I can't do that is really simple because it's being divided equally. So even if it was a static number, I wouldn't necessarily know. Hmm. I wonder. So in a large number of the dungeons of the game, we're going to have to use multiple tools to get through. That was just a really bad way of doing that. And you'll notice it's starting to get dimmer again. <sighs> Naturally, every dungeon in Wild Arms is a puzzle dungeon. Alright, we've got three lizard men. I don't remember if lizard men are weak against anything. They might be weak against Spark now that I think about it. I'm probably going to Spark them, but we'll find out. Level 8, 120 HP, weakness is water. Well, drat. 
I can't do AoE water yet. And I won't be able to for a long time. It takes a long time to get better magic, by the way. Oof. They're still hitting pretty hard. Let's miss the Keelberry up. Mystic! Yay, Mystic. Uh, let's see, some other things. So, the force level ups actually do increase the amount of damage that you do. Um, it seems that force level 2 is the one that increases the most. As well as 3 and 4. Well, 0 and 1, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference. And I don't know if it's just because it's only adding one point of damage or something, or if there's something else to it. <sighs> that boogie. What is with that boogie? Alright. Another carrot. I unfortunately didn't see where a lantern was. There's one. Just making sure I didn't miss anything. That's part of the problem with these types of dungeons where you have to deal with um, whether you miss things or not. Really hard to figure out if you've missed anything. There's a squirrel outside immediately next to the uh, screen door that I have. Funk. So we will figure out what's going on with the um, weaknesses in a later analysis video. But right now, it's not worth it. I'm pretty sure it's 3x damage, and that's it. Oh, so I want to talk a little bit about um, the remake. So the main reason why a lot of people don't like the remake is because... Okay, yeah, there isn't anything I missed. Um, because they messed around with the balance of the game without thinking about it. So in the remake of the game, Cecilia doesn't have Mystic. That's the thing that causes everybody to freak out. After strike, okay. Well, let's spark him. As a result of not having Mystic, there is no way in the game to do an area of effect heal for an extended period of time. Which is terrible. You need to be able to do area of effect heals because the enemies have area of effect spells at this point of the game. I'm gaining way more heal berries than I'm ever going to use. Go this way. Because I always assume that I need to go the other direction, so to speak. Uh, random encounter rate is so high in this game. Luckily, in this game, magic carrots aren't that rare. They're actually much more rare in the later games. Oh, so anyway, um, I actually don't know what they replace Cecilia's first stage ability with. Since if she doesn't have Mystic, I don't know what else she would have. Uh, they gave Mystic to another character that's in the game later on. Um, so yeah, not being able to area of effect heal until much later in the game hurts. Uh, this was the right way, wasn't it? I hate it when I accidentally go the right way. I'm gonna go the other way. I'll be back. Ah, uh, starting to wonder if I should have learned that spell to decrease random encounter rate. That might have actually been tier two spells, though.
So you notice I'm using quite a bit more magic than I normally, and uh, that I have been in the past. The reason for that is that I'm still leveling up. I am actually, I'm right at the correct level for being in here, which makes sense. It's not really, and you could have done some random encounters to be higher level, but it's not like I could have done this early. Mm, might need to heal Cecilia soon. Rudy is leveled up. So I have determined at least that the level ups just increase stats. They're not like Shining Force style where you have a goal set of stats and it randomly determines how much stats that you get on the way to that goal. This is just a flat out, it increases stats. So that means that one, stat increasing items aren't dumb like they are in Shining Force 2. But more importantly, two, um, it should be a linear growth and should be really easy to figure out. Which would be nice. Uh, I'm going to try mixing up my strategy a little bit. Hmm. I didn't realize they had that low hit points. I know I analyzed it, I just can't remember. Ah, that actually glitched my TV. <laughs> Good job. They I thought they were weak against fr Freeze, not immune. Oh well, doesn't matter. It don't matter, none of this matters. Wasn't paying attention. If you use Mystic for all of your Healberry needs, you end up with so many of them in this game. enough to Mystic. Try it. So I was going to heal up via Cecilia using his Mystic Heal Berry. I guess I'll just use a Heal Berry on Cecilia. That's boring. Jack and Cecilia both leveled, and I gained even more Heal Berries. So, Jack's level up. Cecilia's level up. That weapon is so useless in Cecilia's hands. Antidote. And a heal berry. That wasn't even worth it. Oh well. Time to head back to where I was supposed to go. 50 50 shot, and I blew it. Alright. I think that's probably the better way of handling this. Poison! I figured something like that had to be coming. So, we have our first status effect. It's poison. Who would have thought? Our first status effect that warranted, wasn't inflicted by us, that is. Um, drat. I don't have the item to be able to do this yet. So, um, later... You can mystic more than just... Uh, it's not going to end up going off. Oh yeah, I zone. Um, later on, you can find items that, uh, like for instance, you equip it and you're immune to poison. If you mystic those style of items, by the way, this is one of those games where you take damage as you walk um, when you're poisoned. So yeah, uh, as I was saying, 
If I had the item that makes you immune to poison, if I used Mystic on it, it would act as an antidote without using up the item. Which is neat. I forgot to relight the lantern. Oh well. Preemptive strike? Sweet. That will tell me if Rudy's strong enough to take on a triad by himself. I don't think he is. I know Cecilia is not strong enough against the Gamora Toads, but you know. He is strong enough. Okay. Well, that makes this easier. Don't need light anymore. Good. Think this is a safe point? Yeah. So unlike, uh, say, the Final Fantasy games, there's no tent item. There's no way of fully healing at a safe point. We're almost at the point where I need to start overwriting the saves. And yes, I've already, um, oops. I've already, whatchamacallit, um, grabbed the, uh, copied over the saves. Am I already outside? There's more to this dungeon. Maybe I'm thinking of the next one after this. I'd like to get away from Milma. Spark em. And they warned about the winds. Hmm, Cecilia's almost strong enough to take them out on her own now. So I think they have 120 hit points, I want to say. Okay, yeah, there's more. Good, because it's like, I could have swore there was more to this dungeon. Now you get to see one of the goofier elements of this game. Well, after the battle, not before. I do like how the battle area looks different based off of what terrain that you're in. Even if it's sometimes, shall we say, less than accurate. There's a good chance I'm going to actually have to use a magic carrot on Cecilia. If it weren't for the fact that these guys hit so hard, I wouldn't bother. But knocking it down to two enemies left makes things a lot easier for me. I mean, they're hitting me for 50. They're hitting me for over 10% of my max hit points each time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's somewhere. Yep. Ooh, those are some nasty winds. Uh oh, uh, what's going on? These gusts of winds. If I can harness the power. Uh, what? Uh, I, I agree? Why don't you just give it a try? So this is how Jack learns magic. He learns it by interacting with things. So in this case, he interacted with the wind and learned a new fast draw. But I don't know what it is. It's a hint from Mountain Wind. So what I need to do is try it out in combat. The thing is, is that Actually, this one I don't think is the one that you can miss. I think it's the next one that you can miss. Some of these you can miss by just not stepping in the right spot. All 
harpies. So we need to start testing this out. And depending on the fast draw, it will take less or more time to learn. Uh, using a secret sign on a fast draw that's unknown is supposed to, I say supposed to because I actually don't know for sure, it's supposed to um, speed that process up quite a bit. Thunk. And Harpy runs away. Harpies are obnoxious. There we go. We learned Sonic Buster. Well, that sound effect. Also, Harpies have really high defense. So, we learned Sonic Buster. What's Sonic Buster do? It's Jack's first area of effect attack. And it's one that we use for a good chunk of the game. Um, that's actually a good candidate for dropping in cost, but I'm saving my secret signs for a specific one. Because there is one specific ability that we absolutely need. We'll be constantly using, and I want to drop it as low as possible. Those of you that have played Wild Arms 1 already know what I'm talking about. Oh crap, we got ambushed. So the problem is that Harpy's poison, which, and also steal stuff. And they steal powerful things. Like, losing a Mystic Apple at this point is painful. So I don't want that Harpy to run away with a Mystic Apple. Good, it's attacking. Disease. Disease is obnoxious because you can't heal. Boom, boom, boom. And then spark him for the rest. Which I think they're weak against spark? No, just normal damage. Must be wind that they're weak against. And reacquired the item that got stolen from me. Okay, let's deal with this. Is it Violet Rose? No, it's... Which one's the... Diseases. Medicine. I only have that one. That's not great. There we go. I mean, I'm still getting way more... Hillberries than I'm ever going to use. Especially since we can buy them. So, I'll be right back. I need to hit the reset button on my PS2 again. Bloop. So, as you can tell, I decided that I was going to just power through this. Um, unfortunately, there's not really a great way around this. I don't like the graphical quality that I was getting off of. Uh, I mean, RetroArch wasn't too bad, but it was slightly lower quality, and more importantly, lower sound quality. Uh, and my only way around this is to buy another PS2. And I uh, don't want to do that. So. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll end up picking up another PS2. I mean, mine is pretty old. Wouldn't it be a terrible idea for me to pick up a slim PS2? This is an original model PS2 that I've had since 2002, I want to say. So not quite since the beginning, but for a long time. All right. Ah, come on. See, if I had save states, this wouldn't be as big of a deal. But alas, having save states on actual hardware is a little weird. Luckily, we did save in the cave. I've been recording for 40 minutes, and I've gone through one dungeon. Yep. Yep, that sounds about right for me. Harpies, separate groups. Actually, I'm going to Psycho Crack. And let's actually analyze. If they don't both run away. Hmm. Toy Hammer stolen and 6 
68 damage. Ugh. And they're just dead. I think they have something like 100 hit points. And I got that back. My toy hammer. Yeah. I don't think they inflict Confuse on top of everything else. I know this is just an antidote, but... Oh, he'll bury. Whatever. Mundane item, but still. Disease. Great. Ah, it missed. Good. And a second one. That one didn't miss. Oh, okay. Jack can just one-shot him. Good. So they do have 100 hit points, don't they? Level 9. Oh, 85 hit points. Actually lower. Weakness is Earth. Got it. I couldn't remember if this is one of the games that... Um... Oh, I should have accelerated. Yeah, well. I couldn't remember if this is one of the games where... Flying things are immune to Earth, or flying things are weak against Earth. Have you noticed that it always seems to be one or the other, if those elements are in the game? Uh, I'm gonna leave the disease for now. Oh, is it? Okay, no, I always hit it no matter where I'm at. Good to know. Come on. Yeah, this becomes a random thing where Hanban and Jack will discuss a move like this. They get weird. Thanks, Handpan. And by the way, um, my insistence that Handpan is one of the main characters is backed up by the data files in the game. There are four names by the main character area, along with classes for each of them. That would be Rudy, Jack, Cecilia, and Handpan. Of course, there's another reason for Handpans, but we'll get to that later. Handpan's awesome. Sadly, Harpies are probably my best source of XP right now. Dryads, okay. I can one-shot Dryads. And yes, I'm drinking sparkling water out of a teacup. Or tea mug. Coffee mug? A mug. Well, it's not like I drink any one thing. Poison. Good. Uh, for my analysis video, when I deal with the force levels, I need to find out if going up and down help as well. So in Wild Arms 2, there's a force power that, uh, or a personal skill, that's right, that's what they're called, um, that basically gives you a boost to your stats each time your force level goes up. Force level going back down doesn't decrease them. So, basically, you just constantly spend your force to bounce perpetually. You're weak against Earth, eh? Disease. Punch in the face. You can counterattack. And missed. Good boy, yeah. Ba -bum -bum. Thunk. Oh, so, oh, yeah, the personal skills. So it doesn't decrease your stats when you go back down again. So basically what you do... I think I swore there was another item over here. Oh. Um, what you do is you basically just constantly spend your force levels to increase your stats more. What I want to know is if this game does the same thing. Got to actually learn this. That's okay. I'm pretty sure the first one I'm gonna learn pretty quickly. I think it's always once. And then spark them for the rest. Splat. Literally me going, ooh, movement, oh, scroll. Oi. 
Why are all these mountain passes so windy when it's not windy to go up or down? Preemptive strike. Okay, that's going to help some. Well, at least I got one of them. Unfortunately, not enough force to use Accelerator. Otherwise, this would be easy. Oh, he's actually going faster than them randomly. That's good. Now we're back into the dungeon again, or the interior again. I think the second half of this is the shorter half. Other than random encounters, of course. Oh, so I put um, Berserk up above me because I wanted to signify that we are at a second, a separate stage of the game. Uh, Gallo Bears didn't have a weakness. Dryad weakness is sword, or being stabbed, I should say. Bear hug! Hug. Ouch. I'm tempted to shoot it. Well, now that I crit it, I don't need to worry about it. Yeah, well, bear. Be nice if I actually had more disease gearing things. I forgot that disease was this early in the game. It's much later for the other Wild Arms games, which is why I don't think of it. Oops. Good precision that I don't have. This is a hotkey later on for the tools, but by later on I mean in a subsequent game, not in Wild Arms 1. see much of a reason to heal him right now or to remove his disease until I actually need it. I think this is the exit over here, but I'm still lighting that one. No, it's not. Okay. Yep, and this is where handpan's useful. Olive branch. That is immunity to one of those stats effects. Disease. Okay, I can now cure disease. I'm not too concerned anymore. Also, curious, because I can't remember the answer to this. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, no, it's just still there. Oh, his luck dropped. That's weird. I haven't rested. Hmm. That's not what I was expecting to have. I could have swore luck was just re-randomized when you sleep. All right. So my goal is to get Cecilia up a force level so she can Mystic and, um, whatchamacallit, uh, heal Rudy without spending anything. Aw, oh, yeah. Critical from Cecilia. Critical rates, I think, are actually based off of the res stat, for reference. Uh, and Cecilia didn't increase force, did she? Oh, she did. Okay, so... Jack defend, Cecilia, Mystic, Olive Brand. I can Mystic Breezecape? 
I didn't realize that. Huh. Let's take all its branch and punch it in the face. Why is that going first now? Okay, good. I must have rolled really crappy on a knit. So, that will cure disease. And we get to keep the item. I don't know what Mystic Breeze Cape does, though. Well, Cecilia and Rudy both leveled up. Remember last time that Rudy leveled up before Cecilia. Um, Rudy? Cecilia. Okay, cool. Crest Graph. That Crest Graph looked different. I'm pretty sure that's just a normal Crest Graph, but for some reason it looks different to me. So the next time I have Cecilia with... Oh, yep. Uh, the next time I have Cecilia with a Mystic level, I'll find out what the Breeze Cape does. And... The magic map. Somehow I missed this the first time through the game and I have no idea how. I'll show you what the magic map does in a moment, but I heard rumors about the demons, but I don't believe in them. Milma lies south of the mountain pass. Feel free to visit. But don't worry, we will. Okay, so this is what the mystic map does. You hit select, and it shows you the world map and everywhere that you've been. So the one that's in the uh, the one that's top is Surf Village. The one that's over to the right and down a little bit is Kieran Abbey, and the one that's over to the right and not really down at all is Adelaide. This is the world map, and it wraps around in a donut. So it wraps around in every direction. Uh, what is it with RPGs and having donut world maps? Anyway. Water Village of Milma. Keep going south. I actually look quite like Milma. Also, we get to see a beach over here and some light-ish water that will become useful later on in the game. Lizard people. Which apparently, lizard people is a meme that's generated for anti-Semitic stuff, which is unfortunate. I like the concept, I just don't like the actual anti-Semitism. So, we've got a cave over to the right, which this cave is the Sand River. And we also have Milma, which is right here. We'll investigate Milma, save, and exit, basically. And we have new city music. This is Milma, huge, rich, and full of water, the oasis of the world. Going to the Guardian Temple. Stop by the pub first. The owner might have some information for you. Always been blessed with a lot of water. Something to do with the Guardian to the north? Uh, I have the Guardian of Water, so it might have something to do with it. Yep, we're in a new town, so I have to investigate everything. Plus the one who lives for today, all of your status effects are cured. Searching the barrels becomes a lot easier later on in the game. Long ago, there were many like me who came through the cave to the east. Gotta get back to work. Welcome, what can I do for you? So we can buy new equipment. And it's much better equipment, too. Yes, equip. Yes, equip. Yes, equip. There we go. So I'm going to be holding on to one of each piece of equipment, at least for the time being, just so um, I can use Mystic and find out what I can actually Mystic. I hate girls. I was just fooling around, but now she's crying. Wah, wah, my brother won't stop teasing me. Well, you, you deserve to speak up for that. The Tale of the Sheriff. 
True bravery will be rewarded with a sheriff's title. The bravery badge is called a sheriff's star. Do you understand? That book is really strange because they translate it completely differently in the remake of the game, and it's even more confusing in the translation. The Wild Arms games, all of them, to my knowledge, have an item called a Sheriff Star. Sheriff Stars are stupid overpowered accessories that just give a bonus to everything. What about me? So shellfish. Shellfish? I can't speak. Anyway, Milma's a pretty town, but the people here aren't very nice. There's a pyramid far to the north of here. We couldn't enter the chamber because it's sealed by magic. Intent to get a duplicator. As you can see, nothing remains of the deep guardian worship that used to go on here. Yep, they've stopped worshiping the guardians. So yeah, later on, I think it's Rudy actually gets a tool called radar. That allows you to find treasure. And it will just ping on radar. Don't mind my grandpa. Whenever we have company, he gets overly excited. When you become as good as me, you can kill those monsters with one strike of the force. What? What? You say every uh, same thing to everybody? Yep, you do. Okay. Great dream chasers use tools with sophistication. Do you consider yourself great? No. But allow me to use my tools with great sophistication. Oh, hey, look. Agile apple, power apple, potion berry. Speaking of, I should use some of these. Now that I know what the power apples do... Ah, Rudy actually has more strength than Jack right now. Oh, he's higher level. That explains it. I still need to know how agile, uh, how the rest of the apples work. I'm going to increase her mystic. And I'll hold on to the other apples for the time being until I find out. There's a puppy. The puppy is guarding 690 Gela, apparently. Pup owner claims to be the son of a guardian priest. Give me a break. shop. Let's go ahead and let's bump up our medicine to five. In fact, let's bump up all of the status factor moving items to five. Already have nine. I am lay poor. That's fine. Because I donated a bunch of money back in Adelaide. I could probably wait on the donating of money, to be honest. I don't wanna. You can never get a drink in the pub. It's always too crowded. Oh yeah, I forgot that we had equipment, more equipment to buy. Whoops. Can't afford any of them. They're all better than what I have, too. Oh well. I'm gonna be a warrior when I grow up. That's if you grow up. Dun dun dun. Place where the guardians live. No one goes there anymore. Are they not there anymore? There's so many animals here. What do you guys want? I don't want her around here. Guardians, this is north of town. Did you see them on the way? No. Kitty. Metal band acquired. Isn't that his? Yep. 
So, you know, Broody has even more defense. That's nice. Puppy that won't move. Yet. 123 Gela. I can probably afford one of the weapons now, but I'm gonna continue for a bit. It's another item shop. Oh no, it's the Crest Magic Guild. So we do have one crest. Let's go ahead and get ourselves revive. Bing, bing. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, ba Decide to be a magician when I grow up. Well, good for you. Mages are useful. I want to grow up and drink like the adults. I wonder what it tastes like. You can actually talk to him later, and he'll tell you that he snuck in and tasted beer, and it tastes disgusting. Guardian Shrine protecting Milma isn't doing so well. The shrine's in shambles. Is it because we lost our faith? Uh, partially. You're not maintaining the shrine anymore because you lost your faith. It's not much to it. I'm gonna go heal up. And save. And then we will pick this up next time. I think the inn is right... Or, yeah, it's right there. Let's talk to people first. What I hear, the pound is protected by the power of the guardians, but I don't believe that. Pretty apple. So yeah, uh, guardian worship shares a lot in common with Shinto, which makes sense. There's the, yep. 30 kill a night, that's still fine. Eventually, I will start teleporting back to Adelaide to rest, because it's too expensive to rest anywhere else. Um, yeah, so it shares a lot of common with Shinto, which makes sense, given that this is a Japanese game. But the churches themselves share with Christianity, which makes sense, because the Japanese. Alright, and... We're going to go ahead and stop here. I'm going to stop and record the next one because I'm trying to get ahead on my um, Let's Plays. So I will talk to you all next time. Bye, Internet.